grew up uh, on the south side of Chicago, uh, born and raised there. Uh, played Little League at a place called Beverly Brainerd Little League on the south side. Uh, and ended up playing in high school. Uh, played two years in the city and then we moved out to the suburbs. Played two more years there. Uh, I, had, I was a year ahead of myself so I graduated really young and was, didn't grow very fast at all. So for all the kids out there that haven't grown real fast, just stay with it if you're allowed to. Today's world is a little different. You know, with all the uh, AAU baseball and playing year-round and stuff, I feel bad for kids. But, um, you know, in my day, I just kind of hung with it and had two older brothers that played. And, uh, you know, I always was around them, so playing with older kids. And, you know, I guess I learned how to compete pretty well through that, that experience. And then um, went to Florida State, uh, played there for three years, uh, which was a great experience. Had a coach named Jack Stallings there that was a really good teacher of baseball and, and I probably owe as much to him as to anyone. I played, um, I've tried to play all sports, you know, on the south side of Chicago you didn't golf, but I played tennis, <laughs> needless to say, but, um, you know, played uh, hockey during the winter, uh, played a club team in high school, um, played basketball for three years in high school, uh, and enjoyed it, you know. Um, and throughout just, you know, sports was always a big part of my life. And it, whether watching it, uh, watching my brothers play or playing with them, uh, all that. You know, it, it was the days where you genuinely went down to the park and kids would be out there and you picked up games. And, you know, you did it, you picked sides by, you know, going up the bat handle and, you know, the stuff that is really a, a lost art right now and, and you know, kind of unfortunate that kids can't just go to the park and play play baseball anymore and pick up and you know kind of figure things out for themselves instead of having someone there all the time uh, I thought that was an important part of my childhood I never think I'd play professional baseball I mean I, I really yeah, I remember you uh, you know, I always wanted to and I always had it as a distinct goal in my mind but I didn't you know I was I was really small in high school and uh, you know then grew my last year of high school into college, and things just came together. Uh, you know, I can remember almost the game where it came together, which was really amazing. And I played American Legion ball for a, a, a man that was also a bird dog scout with the Reds. And um, I, I was playing Legion ball, and, you know, he never said anything to me. He just coached me. Uh, and then when I grew, he was scouting the game and actually came to see my brother play shortstop and I was pitching and it was a day that everything kind of came together, size, coordination and, you know, I was throwing the ball fairly hard and striking a lot of people out and so after the game he started talking to me. And, I mean, he had coached me for two years, but uh, it all just came together that day and, and subsequently things worked out pretty well. George Zero signed me yeah, in Tampa. Uh, we just, I was at Florida State. We got knocked out of the College World Series uh, unceremoniously in about 12 hours. <laughs> Lost two games. Um, we're in the airport heading back to Tallahassee, and I was paged over the thing. And Randy Davidson was drafted by the Reds, and uh, George wanted me to come down there with him. And I threw, I, you were playing in Tampa that year, I think. Mm -hmm. And I threw on the side, and Russ Nixon was the manager. He watched it. George Zero, who's a, a very well-known scout throughout Florida and, and throughout baseball, really. Uh, and you know, I came in and I signed, and they gave me a glove and a pen, and that's about it. <laughs> went to Billings, Montana, for two weeks. Then went to uh, Eugene, Oregon, where Greg Ruddock managed me, and that was a great experience. We had a good team there. We we won everything there. Went to instruction where we met that first yep, year. Yep. Um, I think we won that league. We did win that league. And then we went to double A, won that league. Uh, I think Roy Matika was the manager there. I, that's, uh, you know, I met Paul Moscow in Billings the year before. Met Ewan instructionally that year and Barry Moss in double A that year. Uh, but, you know, uh, that team was a really good group of guys. You know, our other roommate, Mark Unseld, was 
character, but uh, a really good guy to have on a team. So guys like Mike Grace and Ron Oster and, you know, just it was a good group of guys, aside from, you know, who made it to the major leagues and everything. It was a great group to play with and, and to learn how to, how to uh, you know, fit on a team and, and be teammates. Went to AAA the next year with really the same team intact, and we were forging ahead pretty good. We, it was a good team. I think we were up by eight games and then the trade with Tom Seaver was made and I think you went to the major leagues, Paul Moscow went to the major leagues and uh, that we didn't win too much after that. So uh, that became a little tougher, but it was a lot of fun. And then repeated AAA for year after year, <laughs> for a whole lot of years. Uh, but, you know, a lot of that's how I learned uh, to teach guys. And, you know, you, you constantly try to make it and do different things to make it. And, you know, that way, when you go to teach guys things, you've probably been through it. I thought uh, all through, even in college, you know, anything I could help with, I did. And guys, you know, that, that wanted it, um, you know, I was more than glad to help throughout. But, you know, I, I think the years in Triple I studied the game probably a little more uh, carefully and didn't know that I'd go into coaching, but uh, really, I think at that age, didn't think about it. But I knew how much I liked the game and liked to be around it. So, uh, you know, I enjoyed studying it. And, trying to figure out how to get better and why things worked, why things didn't work and um, you know it just it happened to work out that uh, you know I went in, into coaching right after I you know had injured myself and not that that would have mattered I think I was close to the end of the career anyway so uh, and went into the coaching and ended up uh, being fortunate the way things all worked out. I think my last year playing was 85, 86 and then uh, did the roving for the Reds for the next two years in, in uh, rookie ball and did the instruction league and then uh, did the roving throughout their minor leagues for the year after that and then was very fortunate when Lou Pinello became the manager uh, in 1990 he hired me as a bullpen coach and assistant pitching coach and um, you know we ended up winning the World Series that year and uh, you know Lou throughout my career uh, was really good to me. Uh, you know, I was with him for a few years in different places and taught me a lot and, uh, you know, helped my career quite a bit. And I'll always be indebted to him for that. It, every bit of the way, it was a great experience. And I really wouldn't trade it. Bus rides, you know, five o'clock in the morning flights, the whole thing. It was, you know, I, I don't know if I could go back and do it again, but at the time I enjoyed every bit of it. And, you know, really, the people I met and have continued to meet in baseball. You know, I, you, when I read things about baseball and, and sports in general, that you know how messed up it is with with steroids and the problems that people get into, um, it's not what I see. You know, it's not the part of the game that I've been part of. Um, I look at it as it's part of life in any in any uh, lifestyle or any profession and uh, it's no more so or less so in baseball and the majority of the people that you meet are really good people and you know they're life lifelong friends and uh, I think it's really really misleading uh, the headlines that are garnered and everything else not that I, I mean fully understand it but uh, it's not really what the people in the game are all about. Mm -hmm.